I think it's down to the Duke and Duchess of, of Sussex to make the first the first move. Whether or not it would be accepted by William and Catherine, I doubt very much it, it would be. It, there's too much water now gone under that gone under that bridge. And it, you, you, after everything that you know Harry and Meghan have done with the with the um, Oprah Winfrey interview, that Netflix show Spare, you know the the flamboyant you know curtsy by Meghan on on the on the show as well. There's too much gone under the, the bridge now. For, uh, for And if they're going to make the move, I'm not so sure that William and Catherine would uh, respond favourably. William, yeah. sorry, but William's got a lot more on his mind at the moment than repairing the the, the, the troubles with his, with his own brother. He's got his wife to look after and his three children. They are the most important things that are going on. And if Harry was that keen on making some sort of uh, re, you know, move towards William. Pity he didn't wish him a happy forty-second birthday. No, we we didn't hear anything. Nothing. That. Privately or publicly. Yeah, privately or publicly. Yeah. We had we heard nothing. Yeah. Oh, it, it's kind of sad. I sometimes it think it's sad, but they've made their bed. You know, it's Harry it's, and Meghan have uh, made their bed. Any so. rift in any family is very very sad. They are doing it in the full glare of yeah. publicity, and that's. Obviously, ten times worse than you know you falling out with your sister or brother or, or father or mother or whatever. But you know, Harry's caused an awful lot of pain to various members of the royal family: his father, his brother, his sister-in-law. You know, yeah. it's not a great, not a great sight. But from that, from that quote, we get the impression that you know they're not going to do it unless someone else meets them in the middle, well, which that, is never going to happen. Is no, it? I don't think it's ever going to happen, and I suspect that one of the driving forces in, in not making it happen is Megan herself. I'm not trying to blame her for everything. I don't blame her for everything, but I don't think that uh, things that she's doing help matters. Fine. Let's try and, let's try and finish on a more fun note, sure. Charlie, shall we? So I've got... Um, every week we have some quick-fire fun questions at okay. the end of the show. So I hope you're prepared yeah. for this. OK. So dad dancing. Yeah. So after William's dad dancing, which member of the royal family do you think is the best dancer? Uh, well, it probably was the Queen when she was al uh, alive okay. uh, because she was pictured in, in the various dances. And, of course, her dances were nothing like, uh, you know, Williams or uh, whatever else. But I think Harry was quite a mover as well uh, when, he was, uh, when he was fun. Um, but, um, and I think Zara Tyndall could uh, do quite well. I suppose it depends on the type of music. It does, really, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, they say the late Queen would be an excellent dancer on a ballroom, ballroom or yeah, stuff like yeah. that, but I could imagine Zara probably tearing up the dance floor in yeah, a Yeah, most, most, most of them have had some sort of dance lessons yeah. when they were younger and it's carried on, but I don't, you don't get lessons for dad dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. It just comes to you naturally <laughs> just comes when to you naturally, become a dad. Yeah, just wave your hands around and all that sort of stuff, that's it. <laughs> Right, um, Wimbledon. It's that, we've got Wimbledon starting, as we touched on mm -hmm. earlier, with the Princess of Wales maybe attending. So, if the royal family played mixed doubles, mm. um, who would win? A team of Prince William and the Princess of Wales versus a team of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex? Well, I would say that it would be William and Catherine, uh, and, I'll, and I think that um, certainly Meghan would be taking uh, um, a reaction from the John McEnroe playbook. <laughs> she would be throwing her toys out of the pram. And also, the Princess of Wales, I've seen her play tennis. She, yeah. had, she had a knockabout with Emma Raducanu yeah, a couple yeah, of years yeah. ago. Yeah. I think she knows her stuff. Oh, she does. I yeah. mean, we, we've seen... There's been lots of pictures and lots of footage of her playing tennis. She does know how to hit a ball with the, with the racket. And there would be some anger and fury there as well. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many aces we had oh. <laughs> straight in the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking to Harry and Meghan, where do you see... Harry and Meghan in 10 years. So in 2034, where do you see their life? Well, unfortunately, I can't see anything that's going to change their approach to things and anything else that would make them move on. The only thing that could happen is that there is some sort of reproachment with the royal family. Unless they have that, they're going to be stuck out in Montecito or whatever the next place that they live in. Um, from what we're hearing, uh, Harry's hankering a little bit for his former life. Mm. Um, that's, that's what we keep on, keep on hearing about. But unless, and we've talked about this before, we know that Meghan is never going to come back to this country. She's made no attempts to come back and she's had plenty of opportunity. The big sadness of all this is that the king has only met his 
his grandchildren uh, once Lily Bear and Archie a handful of times. But think of poor old Thomas Markle. He's never even met them. All he sees is the odd picture in some magazine or other. It's not going to be great. There are a lot of casualties, aren't there? There are, mm. yeah. Um, we mentioned Prince Harry had went to the late Queen's, um, uh, which was a final resting place, but we've seen him this week for the first time in, in weeks, if not months. Um, what did you make of that? He did a little... Uh, it was quite a nice, worthy chat with the charity that he's quite close to, talking about something quite close to his heart, which is grievance and, and loss. Yes, um, it was nice. That's Scotty's Little Soldiers, isn't it? That's the, that's the charity that helps the children of any military personnel who die in, in, in action. Um, and that is, a, that is a charity that's very, very close to his heart. And yes, he was involved in talks with the uh, organisers as well as some of the children, um, talking about bereavement and grief. And, you know, Harry has, you know, as we know, has talked about his, his grief over his, uh, his late mother. Um, although, she wasn't, in effect, a military personnel. But it's still, whether you're a military or whether you're not a military, the loss of a parent like that is devastating and traumatic on, on anybody, especially if they're so young. But no, it was nice to see him doing something, I'm not trying to be childish, doing something worthwhile for a change. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. How do you think, in, in your experience, obviously you you know you knew him or you reported on him when he was when he was much younger for, for many many years, he he seems to be engulfed by the grief. Uh, it's something that he brings up a lot. How do you think that he's 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 been coping? How do you think he's coped with the death of his mother after all these years? Well, clearly he hasn't coped with the death uh, of his mother, um, whereas William, you know, has. And again, I, I don't want to pit brother against brother and tick off something that has. But I don't know why why Harry did not seek more help, professional help. Maybe he, he, he did, but it, it didn't work. But I just find that he's continually knocking on about, you know, his late mother, the way the way she was. He's clearly not got over it. And again, I'm not, so, I, I'm not saying it's something you do get over, but you should be able to work within, you know, what, what, what has gone on and not let it rule your life. He seems to have let it rule his life. They do, I mean, they do have different approaches to, yeah. to the late mother, don't they? I mean, um, William is vocal, it appears, when he needs to be. Mm. And Harry often, you know, brings up how he has had to cope or how he has the, the coping mechanisms that he's used to, you know, to, to deal with the death of his mother. So I don't think magic mushrooms was, was, was a great idea, you know, to, <laughs> to, to, to try and help, help out in some of the other things that he's tried, allegedly, yeah. uh, as, as, as well. Whereas William didn't go down, as far as we know, did not go down that route. So maybe that didn't help in his ability to, to try to get a little bit of over it a little.